Alrighty, everyone, we're back in Sherlock Holmes and Jack the Ripper. Shouldn't be much left of this game, but we have to make it into the Jewish club without being seen. Hey, here's stuff that I didn't see last time. Cool. Co. It's a service door and firmly locked. There must be a stock room in the cellar beneath this room. We have to talk to a Jewish butcher. There's a cellar window behind this barrel, which is preventing me from passing. If I can just get into the coal cellar, I shall be in the place. Okay. Oh. This barrel is on a wooden pallet, but it is too heavy to be moved. I will need a pivot. I will need a pivot. Oh. So I'm not that then. What? No. Oh. Here we go. There we are. My pivot is in place. Now, let's find something to tip over this barrel. I will need a pivot. Another pivot? I will need a pivot. Ah. Uh -huh. There we go. Thank you. You looked a bit suspicious, I must say. I should be able to make it tip over. Ah, like that. Yeah, I don't know why it's so dark. I think it's have. I think have. This object is having some lighting problems. Closed. The cellar window is locked from the inside by a simple iron hook. Okay, now we can use this. Let's go. Yeah. Good. Let's try to find the exit that leads to the club. I want. I wanted. The. 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 This may come in handy. <sighs> bucket. That's what it's called. Bucket. Empty tin cans. Okay. Uh. Which door do I want? Closed. Oh, I see. Uh, the kitchen. It's closed, and besides, I won't find what I'm looking for in there. Administration. Perfect. This must be where the information on club members is kept. Let's hope that it really is the key to this door. <laughs> Administration. Of it is. Perfect. This must be where the information on club members is kept. I'm sorry, Jewish community. <laughs> A page from an old Yiddish English dictionary. Court's proceedings. Curious. Oh, Yiddish. Of course. Okay, yeah. Proceedings of judgment. New Court, Tuesday, April 6th, 1886. Before Mr. Recorder. 419. Maurice Phillips, 30. Moss Wolf, 16. And Jacob Levy, 30. Stealing 14 pounds of meat uh, of Hyman Sampson, the master of Phillips and Wolf. Mr. Clewer. Clewer? Prosecuted Mr. Moister appeared for Phillips, Mr. Black for Wolf, and Mr. Gray Geo Jogigan Jogian for Levy. Samuel Bacon, City Policeman 941. I received information from my inspector, and on 10th Mar 10th of March at 6:15 a.m., I was watching the prosecutor's shop. Felix Phillips came up to the door and knocked, got an answer, and went away. About two minutes afterwards, Levy came out of his shop door, which is next door. A post divides them. He knocked at Mr. Sampson's door and went back in at his own door. Came out again in a minute or two, unscrewed the bolt of his shutter bar, and then looked round and knocked at Mr. Sampson's door again. There being no answer, he went down the street 10 or 12 yards to the corner of Stony Lane. Phillips joined him. They conversed and went back to Mr. Sampson's door. Phillips knocked and Levy went in at his own door. The door was opened. Phillips went in and turned up the gas. Levy came out of his shop and went into Mr. Sampson's shop, where he had a conversation with Phillips. He came back in about a minute and went into his own shop, where he saw a wolf, who brought a piece of meat from the back of the shop to the door and hung it on a hook just inside the door. And then came out on the footway, looked round, took the meat off the hook, and took it quickly in at Levy's, Levi's, maybe, door and gave it to Lee Weiss. He then returned to Samson's shop. I ran into Lee Weiss, Levy's shop. 
not even sure, caught hold of him with the meat in his hand, asked what he was going to do with it. He said, we are only having a lark, I'm going to weigh it. I said I did not believe it. I should take him to Mr. Sampson, which I did, and then took him to the station, where I repeated that it was only a lark. I found 32 pounds, 10 stone, 9 something in his pocket. Oh no, maybe, I don't even know what, I, I don't even know. Maybe it's money, I'm not sure. I don't even know what it is. No, wait, not pounds. It's 32 L... 10 S 9D in his pocket. The meat was 14 pounds of beef. I had been watching since 5.15. It was perfectly light outside at 6.15, but not inside Levy's shop, where being there being no gas. Cross-examined by Mr. Black, I was in some buildings opposite, lying among some bricks and rubbish, but not within hearing distance. I could not see who opened the door. As the shutters were not down, but Phillips turned the gas up afterwards. We were both in plain clothes. Wolf sleeps on the premises. James Jones, City Policeman 935. I was with Bacon. I have heard his evidence and corroborate it. Corroborate it. I went to the Samson shop and saw Phillips uh, und Wolf, apparently. I told them I was a police officer and should take them in custody for stealing a piece of beef. Phillips said, I know nothing about it. I came from the back of the shop. Wolf said, I know nothing about it. I took them to the station. Cross-examined by Mr. Black. Wolf did not say, I know nothing about it. I correct myself. He made no reply. Cross-examined by Mr. Giohegan. I did not go into Levy's shop, nor did I see in, as the shutters were up. There may have been a quantity of meat in the background. Him Hyman Sampson. I am a butcher of 35, Middlesex Street. Phillips and Wolf were my servants. Phillips, about three months, and Wolf, about two or two and a half years. I had spoken to the police, and on 10th of March, about five o'clock, I went to market. I was sent for and came back and found the three prisoners in custody. The policeman asked Levy what he intended to do with it. He said that the boy brought it in for a lark and then said Mr. Sampson you are not going to do anything with me the meat was worth 7 s, 7 shillings maybe cross examined by Mr. Moister, Philip slept at the shop on Wednesdays and Thursdays, this was Wednesday morning, he would sleep away from the shop on Tuesday nights cross examined by Mr. Black, I discharged Wolf once and took him back again, I had a place in Goldstone Street for 19 years I know Binwell, a butcher I took Wolf from his employment, I never asked for a character, he was only a little boy I have never found fault with him before Cross-examined by Mr. Gio Hegan. Levy was there before I came. He has not taken customers from me. I have no animosity against him. I have met him out of business hours. This was not the best meat at 6d a pound. I have some at 11d. Levy has never chafed me and said that his meat was better than mine. He buys from the same killer as I do. I sell more expensive meat than he does, but there has been... No joking about it, nor did we ever bet about it. The Jewish, uh, Jewish authorities will not give a man a license unless he has an excellent character. I have accused my wife of robbing me. I did not find out that she had a separate banking account. I did not accuse her before Phillips came into my service. I may have said at the police court that I have accused her 12 months ago. I have not said that if Levy would leave his shop, I could not carry on the prosecution against him. I would not let him off for £10,000. Re-examined at 6.15 a.m. My five employees were on the premises. Levy received a good character. Phillips not guilty. Wolf guilty. Recommended to mercy by the jury. Four months hard labor. Levy guilty of receiving 12 months hard labor. Ooh. Do we have a puzzle here? Some square metal tokens. Curious. There is a document. Oh. Sir, I want to let you know that if your club needs kosher meat when you have any special functions, I would be available to furnish it for you. Guaranteed by a compliant abattoir, it will be delivered directly to your society at a time that is convenient, reasonable prices. Do not hesitate to call upon my services, Jacob Levy. Refused on the advice of Joseph Hyam Levy. There must have been litigation between Joseph Hyam Levy and Jacob Levy. Joseph Hyam Levy and Jacob Levy. Uh, but I was looking for... Oh, here we go. Ooh, I need the metal squares for this. This must be the club's safe. What I'm looking for is probably inside. I need something. This must be the club's safe. What I'm looking for is probably inside. The lock on this chest is very sophisticated. Let's see. Okie dokie. What if I put that there? And I can put that there. I need... One of those two, and one of those two, let's see, do we have that on the side? Yes, that one. Do we have that one up? Yes, we do that one. 
And... Oh, I see. Well, this doesn't work. Uh, maybe it works like this. Uh... No... No... Um... There's only one that has that on the right. There's not a lot of them that has that one overall. So either these two are next to each other or they are at each at one end. Ah. We have We have three with that one down. We have none with that one down. That means that this must be at the top somewhere. Okay, that's good. Um, and we have several with that one up. We have several with that one up. That one to the side. We have several as well. There is one with a, a P. Oh, that one that has it down. Let's see, that one. How many has that one on it? Okay, one. That one is also one. It could be something like this. Except that that P doesn't really match. Uh, it could be something like this. This still doesn't work. Uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, man, how do you start this? Okay, this one has to be up top somewhere, because no, no one else can be there. Okay, we have that on that side. No one for that one either, so this has to be somewhere around here. Um, there's a P on the side, yeah, that works. Which means that this one has to be somewhere like here, maybe? Is there anyone that has N and that one there? No. There's not. It could be like that. Um, which one has that one down? Okay. That one up. Um, this one to the side. Uh, that one works there. Must be that one there. So that one could be there. A uh, there. That does not work though. No, if that one's over there, that has to be over here. Um. Hmm, that does not work. It doesn't work. Uh, we could have. No, we can't have it like that. No. Um. Oh, actually, those two could be at the end of something. No, that one has to be there. I mean, it could be something like that. 
that does not work. Has to be like that. In that case, we have to have that one. That doesn't work. Kind of works, but not really. <clears throat> because that doesn't. That works there. That works there. So it's just this one. It doesn't work. Put that one there. Then we need uh, Nope, we don't have anything like that. Okay, let's do something like this instead, because this has to be up here somewhere, this has to be at the side, and this actually fits in between there. Uh, we have these two that could be here. But that doesn't really work out. Crud. In that case, we need that one there. So it would be something like this. Alright, so I just realized this has to be on top because this one, and these have to be like this, and this has to be somewhere here, and I can't fit it there and not there, so I guess it has to be here, because that one. And I also double checked that these three do indeed, are indeed here, so now I just have to, we don't have to do the rest, which I have not checked. Um, but that should work fairly well at this point. I can't believe I didn't try having it in the middle here, I don't know what happened, but yeah. Um, but yeah. Elementary. There we go. I need something. These documents contain some words in Yiddish, which reads from right to left. We know from Kabbalah the power of Gevatria that enables us to count everything in the world's seen and unseen. Thus we know that Lester counts as... 439 and he is blessed because 439 is also something which means the man of God Dear Joseph, I did the counting of names for our club members which is as follows Mr. Bath is 403 Bet 2, Aleph 1 and Thav 400 Mr. Hammer is 356 Hey 5, Aleph 1, Mem 40, Mem 40, Ayn 70 and Raish 200 Sincerely yours, P.S. Please tell Mr. Murel that provided his name is spelled as Mm-hmm, he is three four six. Uh okay. Mm, what am I doing? Oh, well, it, dish, it does show me. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, just go through the entire alphabet. I'm sure you can work this out from from these two thingies here. Absolutely. Um, not gonna though. Not smart enough for that. Oh, there we go. No, 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 
da 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 doing it the brute force way. Indeed. I know this is the most interesting part of the entire game to watch, right? Oh, I mean, clearly the excitement. Is it this letter? Is it this letter? When will it turn green? Very sophisticated books, though. Turn green. <laughs> We only have one left. It's the answer among us. Excellent. It? Now on to the next step. Louis. Lichtenfeld, Lindenbaum. Oh, Moses. Lipoloski, Liski, Loech. No, wait, Levy, Joseph. Joseph Hyam Levy, 1887, born in Aldgate, 1841, membership April 14th, 1886, home address 36 Middlesex Street, Aldgate, profession, self-employed butcher at 1 Hutchinson Street, Aldgate, dues, 10 shillings, 6 pence, April 14th, 1887, 11 shillings, April 15th, 1888. Here we are, I have the address of this Joseph Hyam Levy, 36 Middlesex Street, now let's try to get out of here without being seen. This may come in handy. I'll just borrow this. Can I just use the map? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I can't get out through the window. It's blocked and appears to be reinforced. I'll have to find another way out. Uh, someone's gonna see me, aren't they? Because almost says it like that. It has been sealed off. The barrel was replaced. I'll have to find another way. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Holmes? Holmes? What are we doing? I can't get out through the window. It's blocked and appears to be reinforced. I'll have to find another way out. No, don't go down the stairs again. Closed. kitchen. It's closed, and besides, I won't find what I'm looking for in there. No, that's not such a good idea. There's a meeting taking place. Oh, I see. No, that's not a good idea. The watchman is still there. I must find a way to get him to leave his post. Okay. Can I... No, that's not such a good idea. Okay. The kitchen. It's closed and... Can I... Do anything here? No? Uh, where do I take my candle? I need something. I need something. Oh. I need something. I need something. Okay. There's something more that I need. Uh. No. Oh. Can I, uh. Here. No. Oh. Bucket. Uh, ooh, what's that? Ooh. Can 
Okay. Um. Blast! My exit is. Okay. Um. All right. And I have a barrel of thingies. Oh. Okay. I need something. I need something. I need something. I need something. Really? You still need something? Dude. I need something. I need something. I need something. Ah, uh, okay. Right. Doesn't seem to be anything in here. More did I need? Um, I don't know what he's doing with the rope, though. I have no idea what he's doing. I need something. You are saying so. Um. Closed. 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 Holmes, dude, help me out here. <laughs> yes, you need something. Okay. What exactly is it that you need that I don't have? Blast! My exit has been. No, I guess we can't really do anything there. Um, I see nothing. Absolutely nothing I can do. I tried to combine everything. something I need something dude huh and of course I should have looked into the ceiling okay okay now let's quickly hide in administration Okay. He's not gonna see Holmes looking through the door, of course not. Run, Holmes, run! Or, you know, walk casually, whatever. <coughs> Let's visit Joseph Levy at 36 Middlesex Street. Okie dokies. 36. There we go. Here I am in Middlesex Street. Let's find number 36. Robert. Robert. I am listening, me lord. No, not really. Robert. Not right now. Um, 36. Robert. Here we go. 36. Sir, what do you want? Hello, ma'am. I would like to speak with Mr. Levy. Do you know if he's in? I am Mrs. Levy, his wife. He's not arrived yet. Do you know when he'll be in? Oh, no idea. You know, he works at the butchers and helps at the slaughterhouse. It often happens that he doesn't come in until early morning and then leaves right away. Well, listen, as soon as your husband Joseph returns, tell him that... My husband isn't called Joseph. You aren't the wife of Joseph Hyam Levy? No, of course not. I'm the wife of Jacob Levy. Mr. Hyam Levy used to live here with his parents, but he moved. I... Mommy, mommy, who is the man that you are talking to? But this poor child has syphilis. He carries the mark on his face. Leave us, children. Go back inside with your brothers and sisters. Yes, mother. Hmm. 
Hmm. As I was saying, Mr. Hyam Levy doesn't live here. He works in a butcher's near Oldgate, but I don't know exactly where. But if you find him, he will surely live next door. Butchers always live near their work. Could you possibly give him a message on my behalf? It just... I don't see him often and... Well, even though we know him, we aren't on friendly terms, you see? Is he bothering you, Mommy? No, Simon, not at all. That's a handsome boy you have. It's Aww. strange that he has light hair. He takes after his father. Strong, with light hair. Wait, he sounds familiar to me. A man of about 50 years old, very big, at least six feet tall and left-handed, correct? You are mistaken yet again. My husband is only 32 years old, no taller than five foot three, and he's right-handed. Obviously, there are many levies in the area. I will leave you, and I pray that you'll excuse the disturbance. Perhaps we will have the pleasure of meeting again. Farewell, ma'am. Goodbye, sir. Oh, dear. Daddy! I must return to Baker Street. Okay. Let's go to Baker Street. Okie dokie. Well, Watson, not looking so good. Whose fault is that, Holmes? If you hadn't shown me your masterpiece in clay. Some actions have much larger repercussions than would be assumed at first glance. Listen, Watson, in a few minutes I will leave Baker Street in order to meet Jack the Ripper and put an end to his crimes. Beforehand, I want to go over all our discoveries to assure myself that everything is clear. <gasps> Jack the Ripper? You know the identity of Jack the Ripper? Without a shadow of a doubt, Watson, and I assure you that we are in possession of all the elements required to determine who Jack the Ripper is. Would you like to do this work with me? Yes. Ooh, that one. Well, we are still missing certain information in order to finish this investigation, Watson. We've actually done a part of this already. Miss J. Kelly had her throat slit the same way as the other victims. As an accomplice, could not have committed these five murders. Definitely killed all of these people. Knowledge of anatomy. White Chapel killer is a scientist. Still possess a large knife. It's a killer. Is or was a butcher. Butcher. Let's see here. The killer hesitated on the organs to remove. The killer wanted to verify the health of his victims. And the victims each had a deformity. Jack the Ripper removed the victims' organs when he could. Lost the organs of some of his victims when he examined them. He removed the victims' his organs when he could. Nick revealed the murderer's right-handed. He is right-handed. Disfigured. Want to give his last victims the appearance of syphilis. Want to rip the faces of his last victims. Want to disfigure them in order to cause sensation. He wants to make it seem like they had syphilis. He wanted us to compare him to a terminal illness. Jack Ripper seems like he suffers from syphilis. Jack Ripper was confronted with syphilis. Perfect, Watson. Let's determine who Jack the Ripper is, Watson. Okie dokie. Let's do this. Thus, we have five suspects. Let's add the elements that correspond to each of them. <laughs> I like that Sickert as a suspect. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sickert. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. I should end the episode, but... Yeah, we're at the end. We'll do it. Okay, final deduction. He was confronted with syphilis. I would say there. And there. Nope. Nope. Cool. Whitechapel killer's poor. Whitechapel killer is or was a butcher. I was like, excuse me? Jack the Ripper has a scorch settled with the Jewish community. They do? Okay. Possesses great physical force. Okay. 
murderer has workman's clothes. Ah, uh, Jacob Levy, it's sort of piling up on you there. Director Ripper lives in a ward at Aldgate. Five feet three. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like it's not sick. <laughs> the murderer has light colored hair and mustache. Oh my god. And there you go, Watson. <gasps> Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper. Fantastic, Holmes. And terrifying. But some aspects of this case are still unclear, at least for me. For example, Watson? Why does the man only kill prostitutes? The man kills prostitutes because he blames them for the misery of his life. He must have frequented them assiduously, and, during these nocturnal visits, he contracted syphilis, which he passed on to his spouse, and by her, at least one of his children. He is an angry man in despair, following a mistake that cannot be fixed. Why does he only kill such miserable prostitutes? He never had the means to afford prostitutes of higher standing than Nichols, Chapman, and the others. At one point in his life, he was forced to steal to make ends meet. This indiscretion cost him dearly. He was imprisoned and exiled from his community. He had frequented low-class prostitutes. Thus, it was they who infected him, and they who must pay. But why did he remove the organs? To take vengeance on his own community, which rejected him and had more success than he. He is a man who bore the burden of a sinister reputation, that of a thief and a madman because of his internment. So he took his vengeance in the most cowardly and horrific manner imaginable. He rubbed his knife on the uterus of a sick prostitute before using it. He passed Edal's kidney off as a veal kidney. Why did he disfigure the faces of the last two victims? Revenge yet again, Watson. This is what you did to my child. You will suffer the same fate. And the piece of apron and the message at Goulston Street? The only reason to have placed the piece of apron incriminating the message and attracting attention towards himself is that the people that Levy holds responsible for his arrest live in this building. The butchers where he committed the theft is found in Goulston Street, and the majority of the butchers who denounced him surely live close to their workplaces. But finally, Holmes, why didn't his wife or anyone else notice anything? His wife has many children and must be very busy. The man is a butcher, which must facilitate things when one is questioned by the police in the street and must justify the blood stains on oneself. Furthermore, butchers often work during the night as the meat must be sold fresh each morning. His nocturnal absences were easily justifiable. Finally, he works in the butchers or slaughterhouses. Nothing could be more simple than slipping a kidney in here and using a knife soiled with human blood there. This story is frightful, Holmes. Indeed, Watson. Lies, infidelity, venereal disease, murder, mutilation, and finally cannibalism. A complete anthology of what humans at their most vile are capable. Let's go at once to Whitechapel and put this madman where he can do no more harm, Holmes. Let's, Watson. I do believe we are not alone. I hope these men won't prevent us from passing. Me? No. But you, yes, Watson. Your journey ends here tonight. Pardon? You're sometimes a little hot-headed. Uh, moreover, Mr. Solomonovich has a few things to tell you. I won't be long. You can come in, Mr. Holmes. He's waiting for you inside. Everything was organized according to your instructions. I don't know how to thank you. Later, later. Dr. Watson is awaiting an explanation from you.
Hello, Watson. Holmes, have you the slightest idea of what you are doing? I think so, Watson. Leaving this bloodthirsty pervert at liberty and hiding his existence from the London police? What folly! Certainly, the police will never find their man. But with so many men deployed, this affair will indirectly have a benevolent effect on the crime in the vicinity. But Holmes, wait! Justice hasn't been served. And we are accomplices to the fact. Justice? But I don't serve justice, Watson. I serve truth. And incidentally, I serve my country, and I don't think that I have ever served it better than today. Imagine if after months of terror and a murder as abominable as that of Miller's court, we deliver to the English people a man of the Jewish faith, a journeyman, and head of family as the guilty party. A man who forced members of his own people to eat human flesh. All of this contained tension would have exploded in a myriad of anti-Semitic acts which would have thrown Whitechapel into a rage of fire and blood. And this man's family, who are completely innocent and have suffered more than their lot, would have been the first in the line of sight. Should we condemn an entire people to shame and promise them a thousand wounds because one of their members committed an unmentionable crime? Neither I nor you have the right to do so. Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper, is now in the hands of his own people. I have complete faith in Mr. Solomovich and the members of his community who, I remind you, courageously helped us. They took great risks and acted with the most salutary discretion. And, oh yes, it is understood that you cannot chronicle this investigation. It would be best to invent a story that takes us far from London during the somber period in pursuit of, let's see, something challenging. A ghostly dog that glows in the night. Don't be ridiculous, Holmes. But what will happen now? The police will endure a serious setback and a real loss of credibility. And... and this... this man? Well, a few months after the murders have ceased, the police commission, finding themselves at an impasse, will come up with a story to tell, and everyone will vow that they know the secret identity of the killer without having the right to reveal it. As for Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper, he will be imprisoned by his own people. He will pace like a lion in its cage until the end of his days, haunted by his crimes and his insatiable vengeance. Until finally the disease which drove him to kill those poor women will finish its work and make him its final victim.
apparently it's all black now. I have no idea what's happening. Can I click? Oh. Well, almost. Whoa. There we go. There we have the menu. Alright, so that was the ending of Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. And all the credits and everything. It was... Um... I don't know. I guess longer than I thought for some reason. I don't know why I thought it would be short. Um, it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. This was really, really cool. Um, absolutely. Um, some of the puzzles... Yeah. But, I mean, if you had instructions, <laughs> it was okay. You know, if you actually knew how they worked. But, uh, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, thank you all for sharing this game with me. Yes, it was a little... This was definitely one of the... Probably the darkest Sherlock Holmes games thus far. Of the three we have played. Um, yeah, very much so. Um, one of the many theories, as they said, of Jack the Ripper. No fact, just theory. Um, and, and yeah. No, but it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. So, again, thank you all very much for sharing this game with me, for watching. Uh, and we're gonna play more Shokom games. We have two more Shokom games. Shokom games to get through, and then maybe... Hop, I'm not sure. I like how he referred to the Hound of Baskerville there. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Um, but yeah. That is it for this game. So thank you. thank you all again for watching. I'm just saying that all the time. But but I mean, if no one was watching, I mean, the whole point of my recording would be, you know, pretty not. So, you know, it's the whole thing, really. Um, and all the support and everything. I mean, you guys are the channel, basically. Uh, yeah, we're going to play more Sherlock Holmes. So, you know, stay tuned for that. And uh, take care of yourselves and I'll see ya.